Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whichever and whenever you are watching this. My name is Reverend Russell Butler. I am the pastor at Christ United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with me this morning or whenever you're watching. A couple of announcements before we begin. <coughs> Excuse me. One of them is Lorraine Dale, who's a longtime member of the church, turns 100 on August the 13th. And if you'd like to send her a birthday card, that would be terrific. You can send it here to the church, or you can send it to her uh, place over there at Highland Cove, if you know it. Also, Ted Stathakis will be turning 99 uh, this month also. And so, uh, Ted would, I know, love to have a birthday card sent over there to the veterans' home. Well, great to have you. I have to tell you a, a short story before we start. I was uh, told last week that maybe I shouldn't wear a, a t-shirt during the coffee hour Zoom because it is Sunday, you know, and I said, well, I was wearing a, a church t-shirt, a Pine Cliff Camp t-shirt because I was going to go to Pine Cliff this week, which is up by Colville, uh, down a road up there, uh, and they were going to have a day camp for junior high and senior high youth, and I was supposed to teach a class or a Bible story. And so I had prepared it all and I drove up on Thursday, the right day, uh, got there at 1130, the right time. However, uh, I got, got there and I saw that nobody else was there. So I was in the right place, but at the wrong time. So I don't know if you've been there, but you can't get any tele telephone service there. And so I, uh, I was driving back toward Colville and I, I got a message from the person who was coordinating and said, Rusty, where are you? And I said, well, I'm at Pinecliff. And he said, you're supposed to be at St. Paul's Church. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. So I uh, really made a, a mess of that whole thing. So that's just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, I laughed about it, but I'm not sure that he was very happy about it. So I'm sorry, Ron. And hopefully next time I'll get to the right place at the right time. Well, today I'm going to talk about play and how Jesus was playing with people sometimes with his words and his choice of words and the stories he told. And so uh, I'd like to do is start us with uh, a prayer. And I invite you to pray with me. Oh, God, give us a sense of humor and also things to laugh about. Give us the grace to take a joke against ourselves and to see the funny 
side of the things we do. Save us from annoyance, bad tempers, resentfulness. Help us to laugh even in the face of trouble. Fill our minds, O God, with the love and the laughter of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, at this point, I, I want to invite you to uh, listen to Kelly Carpenter, who is our Director of Children and Young Families Ministries. Kelly is going to sing a song for us. I'm not sure that's going to be the music today, but she does a great job with singing this little light of mine, and I know that you'll want to join in. So bring the children over if you have any, and we'll listen to Kelly. Hi, I'm Kelly Carpenter, Children and Young Family Ministries Coordinator. And this week, our Bible story talks about Paul and Silas and when they were in prison. And they sang praise songs in prison. Can you imagine doing that? Well, I'm sure they had to be some pretty upbeat songs. And, you know, one of the songs that I really liked as a kid and I still love as an adult is This Little Light of Mine. So we're going to sing that here together real quick. And it goes... This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. That's a pretty fun song to sing, and there's a whole bunch of other verses, and you might know some different ones, but I thought, well, that's a fun song to sing and just really reminds us, to let your light shine. And so pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for songs. Thank you for praise songs. Thank you for Jesus, the light of the world, and thank you for letting our own light shine. Amen. Have a great week. Bye. Thank you, Kelly. Great singing. At this point, I'm going to read the scripture for the day. It is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, if you want to get your Bibles and follow along. Chapter 19, verse 23. Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astounded and said, well, then who can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, well, for mortals, it's impossible. But for God, all things are possible. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, would you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts move us ever down the road of joy and life and faith. Amen. Today I want us to consider how important play and humor and laughter is to the religious life, especially during this time when it is so abnormal and stressful. And so we need to play sometimes. I'm sure of it. I love to play. Right now, I, I play golf. That's my favorite game to play. But I've been playing some Scrabble with friends and Scattergories. I grew up in a family that played. We played card games from the time we were little, board games, Monopoly and Life and Risk and Aggravation and Checkers and Chess. We played together. We did the same when I became a parent. Played board games, card games, video games with the boys. 
when they were older, high school age, that's a time that sometimes high school students and parents tend to spread apart. That's just the nature of things, go their separate ways. But somehow, we were lucky enough to find a used ping pong table and a friend gave us an old rickety foosball table. And so through their high school years, I played hundreds of games with my sons. A great way to spend time with them. Maybe some of you grew up in families that played together. I wish someone would do a study about that, about whether the family that plays together stays together through the years. Growing up, we were a playing family, but church was a whole other matter. Church and religion were serious business. It started when we were young. Were you ever shushed at church? Shush. Even if we were quiet, my brother and sister and I, we knew that we weren't supposed to make any kind of commotion. We were supposed to sit still and be quiet at church. My sister and brother and I, we were dressed in our Sunday best, sitting in between my parents on a hard pew. We were like wild horses ready to roam, but at church we were corralled. We knew it from the way we were dressed, white shirts, black ties, pressed pants, dress for my, my sister, buttoned down. And it stayed that way through our elementary schools right into our adolescent years. Our church had a balcony. I don't know if your church did when you were growing up, but our church had a balcony. And that's where the teenagers sat together. And they would make commotion and, and have fun up there. I was never allowed to go up to the balcony. Sometimes wonder what happens to those young people who sit in the balconies of churches. When they're, do they end up lifelong criminals, reprobates? Who knows? Maybe they become pastors. I don't know. But religion was serious. There was no giggling, no running around, no playing for sure. And when we got a little older, it got even more serious. Some of us got scared to death hearing those teachings about hell and damnation and our souls needing to be saved. Our souls destined to the fiery pit of, for all eternity, unless you said the right words, the formula. Maybe you grew up in one of those churches. Serious stuff, no playing around, no laughter, no humor. Then there's the funerals, serious. Everything was life and death issues. Can't be more serious than that. But there's another side. There's another side to religion, another side to Jesus, another side to the Bible. And we get hints about it. Have you noticed them? The other side? It's there, but you've got to seek it out. In 1964, a man named Elton Trueblood, he was a doctor, wrote a book called The Humor of Christ. He looked at 30 different passages in the Gospels and then explained that any alleged Christianity which fails to express itself in gaiety at some point is clearly spiritual. Furious. He went on and said the Christian is joyful not because they're blind to injustice and suffering, but because they are convinced that these are never ultimate. He was reading the scripture about the speck in another person's eye to his four-year-old son, and he was serious about it when he was reading it, and suddenly the little boy began to laugh. The child laughed because he saw how preposterous it was for a man to be so deeply concerned about the speck in someone else's eye when he had a log in his own eye. It's ludicrous. The child understood it. And True Blood said he began to look for humor in all the aspects of the life and teachings of Jesus. He said first he thought there might be enough for a chapter, but by the time he was done, there was enough for a book. If someone would have told me years earlier that, hey, there are some funny stories in this book, it could have made a big difference. Some of the stories that Jesus told, like the one where he said to the scribes and Pharisees, you swallow a camel and strain out a gnat. When you think about it, that's just plain funny. He was playing with them. Then there's the one from today. It would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. It's one of those just natural responses, kind of off the off the top of the head kinds of things, but it's witty and funny, and you can tell Jesus is verbally 
playing with his disciples and with the people who heard that story. It tickles me and it tickled the people who were writing the stories. And so they wrote it in a way that shows the humor. For many of us, play and laughter and humor has made the church a richer place, a place where the load is lightened and the burdens of living become easier to bear. I can't remember any lessons learned from that old church in Pierce, South Dakota, but I can remember the fellowship hall that they had right under the sanctuary. On that fellowship hall floor, someone had painted a four square court on it. Do you know the game four square? So we played every day, every day that we were there, we would go down below the sanctuary where all the serious stuff was and we would play four square. And then I remember that in the youth room when I got a little bit older, they had a jukebox and you could, you, you could play it and you didn't even have to put any money in it. What a deal that was. When I started to attend church as an adult, I was invited to play on a softball team. We were called the Angels. We should have probably been called the Devils, but that's what we were called, the Angels. We played basketball in the, in the fellowship center, uh, young men doing that. And, and then when my, I became a youth minister, every week at youth group, we would start by playing a game, whether it was a trust game or uh, some other kind of game outside outside, inside, sardines, who, ne who, who knows. But when you were playing a game, I knew this, that everyone was included and the social hierarchies that are part of the junior high and high school life get dismantled during the playing of a game. We're all kind of even when we're playing a game. At junior high camp, the highlight of the week was playing a huge capture the flag game around the whole camp out of Buckhorn, which is a camp on the east uh, up, up by uh, Fort Collins. Now here at this church, at Christ United Methodist Church, you made a decision a long time ago to build a gym, a place to play. And I have a feeling that there will be some people who remember Christ United Methodist Church not as the place where they heard great sermons, learned Sunday school lessons from a variety of men and women, but as a place where they played in the gym and where they ate donuts, of course. I asked one of the octogenarians I know if they remembered playing at church when they were a kid. And she said she remembered playing Annie Annie I over, over the top, of the parsonage you know that game you throw a ball up over the roof and if one team catches it then they sneak around the other side and try to tag the people on the other side that's a pastor even back then who knew that playing is part of the religious life playing it's like a release valve on life that's what I think Jesus was doing when he was playing those word games with people. Life isn't meant to be so serious is the way I read it. I wonder, I wonder how you read it. Oh, I hope you have a chance to play some and to laugh some this week. Be well. Take care. I hope to see you soon. Amen.